Um, hello everyone, um, I'm Louise Fowler, I work for MOLA um, Museum of London Archaeology in London and I'm Post Excavation Manager there and I just want to say a really big thank you to the organisers for first of all letting me put some work on display in the room next door and then second of all letting me come and talk about it to you. It's great to see so many people here. Um, so this is what's on display next door. Um, it's something a bit different from what we've been talking about, so I'm going to confess to you now that I'm not an artist. Um, I can't draw, and uh, if I was, I'd probably be um, more of a Damien Hurst or a Tracy Emin, just um, pulling stuff out of our GIS project for this um, site at Moorgate that I'm going to tell you a little bit about now. Um, these are the hand-drawn plans that were made during the excavation of this site. It's in the city. Um, there are 5,661 individual plans making up that image um, and it's what sits in the GIS project that we're using to analyse the data for the site. Um, so this is a site that I've been involved with for several years now. Um, I started off there as a site supervisor in 2010 when we were doing test pits. Um, and the main phase of field work took place between 2010 and 2012. So the images at the top is what it looks like today. Um, the one on the bottom is what it looked like during the main phase of excavation. We had several um, stints of work on the site. One before all the buildings came down, a second one after they'd come down. Um, you can see this huge amount of propping at the side there, holding up the facade of the buildings on Moorgate. So it was a real engineering feat to get all this work done. We had about um, four metres of stratified archaeological deposits to get through um, in some of the deeper parts of the site. So, um, so I think we had about 40 archaeologists on site, the busiest sort of period. Um, so it's a big undertaking. Um, the site in the city, this is it located within the Roman city um, and just about see there. It's in the valley of a stream called the Woolbrook, which runs through um, the city, and that's led to really incredible preservation there of all the organic material. Um, we've got lots of wood and leather, um, as well as seeds and other things. Um, as well as being really wet and good for preservation, it also has meant that people living on the site have been having to deal with the issue of flooding as they were living there. So you've got a constant need to build up the ground level to try and get the buildings above the level of flooding. So I've got some images of some of the really fantastic um, archaeology that we had. Uh, we had some really well preserved clay and timber buildings that were Roman um, in date. So this is, uh, you sort of see running down the middle here, an alleyway running through the site. And on the right hand side is um, a building with a half there. Um, this is a pale fence. It's probably late first century AD. Um, we also had first evidence for fence, Roman fence panels, like you buy in B&Q, <laughs> being used on the site. So that was a really exciting thing to find. Um, a timber well truncated by a pile from the 1980s. So um, you can see that even though there were modern buildings on the site, we still had an awful lot of archaeology surviving. So I've already said the plans that are on display in the other room are from our GIS project that we're using along with the, matri the Harris matrix for the site and all the finds information, all the dating information that we get from that to interpret the um, archaeology, um, we'd normally use this information to sort of build up phase plans for the site. So these are um, a couple of phase plans from some other sites, um, similar sites in the city. Uh, <coughs> the thing that strikes me about them all the time is that, and it's always difficult when we're putting them together, is we can only really represent one time within them um, easily. So once you start getting more than one phase, it gets complicated. So 
this one on the right here, you've got a couple of phases there, but you can only really see it where, the thing, where things are not overlapping, where they're not built in the same place. Um, so I thought, is there something that this is telling us that the phase plans don't? Um, and in comparison, it looks just like this confused, tangled web of lines. Um, but there are, once you start to look at it, things that are emerging from that confusion. So, I've you know, got a pointer here. These, some of the things that are clearest are some of the trench edges that we had during the excavation. So, mm -hmm. probably not telling us an awful lot. We've got, um, you know, the edge of the sheet piling there and another trench that was dug for the excavation. But quite striking are these alignments that are sort of running just off east-west across the site. Um, and these are Roman property boundaries that were first established towards the end of the first century AD. Um, so I'm going to show you some images from this building here in the southwest corner, which is showing up really clearly um, to try and understand how that's happening. Um, this is what we'd normally produce. This is something that we've produced from one of our reports to show that building. So it's very simplified just showing wall lines. You can see that alleyway that I showed you the photograph of running through the middle there. Um, but this building actually has a really complex history that isn't reflected in that plan. So some of the photographs here, we start off, as I've said, the site's in the valley of the Walbrook. So the first thing that happened when this building was built was that the builders wanted to raise the ground level up a little bit but above the level of flooding from the Walbrook. So um, a load of timber piles went in to sit underneath the walls, so they would have marked out where they wanted the walls to go and then put timber planking up against those to hold um, dumped clay that they were using to build up the ground level. So image of that. So that's after the clay dumps have gone in and um, sill beams have gone in to sit underneath the walls as well. So you've got timbers starting to appear <coughs> sitting on top of the piles. Then you've got some of the earliest floor surfaces in that building. Um, but even this wasn't really enough to get it up quite as high as it needed to be. So we've got evidence for several more floors getting built up on top of there. <coughs> This is one of the later phases of the building. So you've got this long history of construction, renewal, use that isn't being reflected in the site plan. So that's where I wanted to get to really. Um, so in conclusion, these lines that are starting to appear is, um, that are emphasised within this image are lines that are existing not just two-dimensionally in space, but they're persisting through time as well. Um, and the question for all of you is, is there a way of trying to use this to make more informative 2D representations of what we're doing? So thank you.